Hello, I've been asked to do this weekly reflection for the circuit and I want to talk about a response to COVID-19 and what I really want to talk about is death. Either our own death, contaminated by other people, or alternatively, the way we ourselves might be carriers to infect others. Christianity's got a lot to say about death, but I haven't really heard an awful lot said, so I'm going to be the fool who rushes in where angels fear to tread. What I shall try to do is ask, what is it like to die? And then a quite different de de question, I think. What's life like when you're dead? Now, at my age, I shall soon be dead. Soon being a relative term. It might be a sudden heart attack next week. It might be that dementia catches me in 10 or 15 years time. I don't know. And neither does anybody else. I saw somewhere written that we're all of, us, all of us only one breath away from death. That's a bit frightening. But I don't think God has fixed a time for my death. I think I, I remember seeing a film once where somebody found that secret and told everybody when they got, were going to die. And life was awful. I don't really want to know when I'm going to die. I don't think God's fixed a date. If he has, then I've cheated him two or three times already by going to the doctors and being healed of various diseases that ought to have killed me if it had been done in his time without my intervention. Anyhow, and if you want me to be really biblically naughty, if God's got a time fixed for our death, what was Jesus doing raising Lazarus after God had seen him dead? So, what's it like to die? I don't know. I've never died before. I don't think anybody else knows either, because nobody else has ever died before. It's this unknown that becomes a threat. And then we let our imagination run away with us, and we imagine all kinds of things that could be linked in with dying. And fear, I think, becomes the operating emotion on how we, we, we respond to the idea of going through the process of dying. It's the not knowing, for me, that's frightening. It might well be that suddenly I drop down dead, I don't even know I've died. I'm just stepping from one form of being, hopefully, more about that later, to another. It might well be that I have a lingering death and start off being unwell and getting progressively limited in what I can do and perhaps even finishing up having to be waited on hand and foot, literally, and having to be cared for in the most intimate of ways. I don't know. I don't know what it'll be like. The pain that might be about, that sets our fears going. The loss of self-control, that gets all our fear going. The loss of mental ability and bodily function, we fear for what might come because we don't know. Now we Christians, I think, have something very positive to say about fear in relation to death. The consolation that immediately comes to my mind is not Christian, but Jewish, but we've adopted it as Christians as well. You'll know the words, Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Whatever this dying process is like, God shares it with us. Jesus said, look, I'm with you right till the end of time. Or if you also want another way of looking at it, when Jesus is born, we're told that his name is Emmanuel. That's Hebrew for simply, God is with us. Wasn't it Wesley who, his last words were, best of all, God is with us. That dying thing does not separate us from God, he shares it and carries it us through with it. So, having, I hope, said something helpful, or at least helping you to reflect upon and becoming overcoming your fear of death, what about when we're dead? What happens? And what's it like? Well, again, I don't know. I know what I believe, but believing is different from knowing. I don't know what it's like, 
And if it's any consolation, neither does anybody else. Nobody knows what it's like to be dead. All we can do is guess or imagine or try and get some feelers from, as Christians, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the story of the life of Jesus and what he said and how he behaved. So if there's something, what might it be? Well, I'm sure it isn't nothing, because that's an option. It could be that when you die, you just cease to be. A bit like going into a dreamless sleep. You don't know you're in a dreamless sleep. You don't know what's going on around you. You just don't know anything. You are, you're breathing and your heart's beating, but you're unconscious. Death could be like that, a nothingness. A lot of people, I think, hope for that. I don't. I think there is more to life beyond death. And I think that because, because of the way Jesus taught us to hope in God. And because I think it makes sense to see that if there's purpose in life, there's purpose in death as well. So I can't go along with the nothingness of death. So I'll look for what there might be. And the traditional Christian answer to that question is that there's either hell or heaven. Now, I don't believe that there is a hell. I know it's talked about in various ways in the Bible, but I don't believe hell exists. And I don't believe that when I die or when anybody else dies, there is a state of torment and retribution waiting for them. Why? Simply because Jesus told a story of the unconditional love of a father, a really good man who when his son cheated on him, went away, ignored him, neglected him, forgot him, welcomed him home unconditionally. The son didn't have to pay penance, the son didn't have to say anything, not even apologize. The father welcomed him simply because he was there. So that's why I don't think there's a hell. I think that father of the prodigal son is an image of God that I cherish. So if there's no hell, so what about heaven? Well, I don't think the book of Revelation helps me at all. I don't find the, the idea of angels helpful, uh, pearly gates, sapphire walls, rivers running down the middle of the street don't turn me on at all as to a good place to be I start with the story of the resurrection of Jesus now I can't understand the resurrection of Jesus I can't see how a person who's utterly and thoroughly dead can be alive again because they're contradictory terms so I can't understand it but I do believe that whatever happened it made such a difference to the disciples that they lived from then on as if he were alive. And that is my faith. I live as if he were alive and trust that he is. And in my experience, although I had never had any visions or anything like that, I somehow feel that there's a living relationship between me and this Jesus. Do you remember the old childhood thing? thing, the, the old childhood cliff chorus, he lives, he lives within my heart. That's it for me. So that's where I begin. And then I go a step further, because I'm helped by Paul's phrase about a spiritual body. Paul can't understand what he really means by a spiritual body, because it's a contradiction in terms. That which is spirit cannot be flesh, and that which is flesh cannot be spirit, as he himself said. But he puts the two together, a spiritual body. I think what he means, and this I find helpful, is that after death, there's an individuality of consciousness. I shall still be me, and I shall know I'm me, and I shall be able to interact in a similar way, though maybe, it may be quite differently, to how, how I interact now with other people and other beings. I think that will be a part of heaven. It will be a me. But that me is in such a different context that th this might seem frightening, but I find it exciting. 
I shall see God. I, I, I shall be in such a relationship with God that there's a, an intimacy and a confidence and a unity that I can't begin to imagine. I shan't lose my identity, I think. I shall still be able to look to God as an other. But what I see of him will be so such a revelation that I can't begin to imagine what a glory and joy it might be. What an intensity of affection and grace I shall receive and find. So there's that expectancy of finding more of the reality of the love that I believe God to be. And I hope there are things to do in heaven. That might seem a silly thing to do because all that the book of Revelation says is you keep singing all day. That's not so bad, but you keep singing the same song in the book of Revelation and that must be utterly boring. And I don't know how God manages to put up with it. However, I, I see God as a person who, if you like, is at work. I mean, he, he did work for six days and had a rest, so Genesis tells us. I, I think God is an active, is active, involved, and I believe, I hope, heaven is somewhere where I can be active alongside God. I'm not just resting about, I'm not just in suspended animation, I'm doing something to further God's love in his creation. Let me finish with the last verse of a hymn. I'm going to alter the last line because I don't think crowned in glory fits my way of imagining what heaven is like. Bold, I approach the eternal throne to claim the crown, to claim the life through Christ my Lord. No condemnation now I dread, Jesus and all in him is mine, alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold, I approach the eternal throne to claim the love through Christ alone. I hope you found that helpful. I enjoyed putting it together.